one of the most challenging parts of working with titrations and titration curves is trying to find some information about the equivalence point. We really do need to know a lot about the equivalence point because it's knowing the equivalence point pH that helps us choose an indicator. We need to choose an indicator which has a pKa in the steepest part of our titration curve. Um, so as part of that process, we're often asked to find the equivalence point pH. What's also asked of us is to find the equivalence point volume. And that's actually not as hard as it sounds. Once we know the equivalence point volume, of course, we can find the half equivalence point volume, and that's where our buffer, the middle of our buffer region is, and so on. Okay, so how do I do it with the information I'm given? Well, here I've got that it's 0 0.1 moles per litre of sodium hydroxide, probably in a very big burette. You'll see why when we do this in a moment. It must have been a very big one. And 20 mils of 0.2 moles per litre of ethanolic acid. We're also given the Ka. Without this value, we're going to find it pretty hard to do anything beyond finding the equivalence point volume, actually. Okay. So the first thing to go is what's actually happening. Well, the equivalence means the equ an equal number of moles. So it's N equals CV because they're both, vo they're both solutions. So if I have a look at these, I have an amount, sorry, a concentration and a volume of one of the species, ethanolic acid. So I can find the amount of ethanolic acid in this. So 20 over 1,000 to get it into litres times 0.2 will give me... I'm doing this off the top of my head, so I hope I'm right. Uh, 4 times 10 to the negative 2 moles of ethanolic acid. So in this Erlenmeyer flask, I've got 0.02 moles, of, sorry, 0.04 moles of ethanolic acid. That means for equivalence, I need to get 0.04 moles of, ethan, of sodium hydroxide into that Erlenmeyer flask to react. So I need the same amount, an equivalent amount, number of moles, of this in here. So what I'm trying to do is get that this is 0.04 moles of sodium hydroxide. So I rearrange my C in equals NV, sorry, C equals N over V, I rearrange this so that volume is the subject. So I go volume equals N over C. 0.1 over 0.04, quickly doing that in my head, is, I hope I'm going to get this right, it should be, sorry, I've got the right way around, sorry, 0.4, ah, there we go, 0.04 over 0.1, that's better, um, will give me my 40 mils. So my volume here is going to be 40 mils. Okay, 0.04, uh, sorry, yeah, 0.4. So I find that this will be 40 Mills. I now have a point on my graph that I can that I can do. 40 mils is my equivalence volume. Sort of makes sense. If you're good enough at your maths, you can quickly see, oh look, it's twice as concentrated, this one, so I'll need twice the volume of that to have the same number of moles. But it won't always be that simple. So my process, just to go through it very quickly, I went N equals C times V for what I did know. I took that same N value, so it's equivalent, equivalence point, to find V equals N over C and then turned it back into millilitres because that's a more realistic number to sketch on a graph. Then I get to the hard question, find the equivalence point pH and this is really quite full on. So what I want to do is break it down to where do I start? I always start with the balanced equation, always. I need to know what this reaction is. Now it's making an aqueous solution, so there'll be something else happening. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, well, sodium hydroxide is reacting with ethanolic acid, an acid-base reaction or neutralization. So I should have NaOH plus CH3COOH going to its neutralization, so it must make water. Well, that leaves Na. CH3COO, that's what's left over. So it does, it makes sodium ethanoate. Now, what I'm going to do very quickly is go through how much there is of everything. Initially, I found that the amount 
was 0 0.04, don't worry about significant figures for now, this was 0 0.04 moles for these two. So that's what was that equivalence point. So if I've got 0 0.04 moles of that, I must have 0 0.04 moles of that because it's a balanced equation, which means I must have 0 0.04 moles of this product because there's no numbers in front of anything, so they're all in a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one ratio. Then, you might remember this little thing we make often for these. I'm getting 0.004. Oh, okay, that's just me doing a quick maths error in my head in that case. Cool, thank you. Okay, the next thing is that I already know my volumes as well. I know that I've got, well I've just worked out, 40 mils of this, and I'm sorry I'm going to put it in mils. So I put it over a thousand just to make my life easy. I had 20 mils of this. Now, what does that mean our number's going to be over here? How much volume will there be of this solution? 60. 60 mils. The 40 mils is added to the 20 mils. This is the big step most students forget, is to add these two volumes together to say actually that means you've got 60 mils of this solution. That's the big step that's forgotten. Which means now I've got enough information to work out the concentration of what's in there. Because I need to know the concentration of the product to work out its pH. Alright, so my next step is concentration. Look, I'm not going to rewrite these ones in because they're given in the question. So, ignore those two. But what I am going to do is go C equals N over V. So, this over this to give me, and I'll ask for some help on that one. So 0 0.066 repeating. Okay, now I'm going to use my three significant figures because I might as well, so I'm not rewriting a heap of sixes in my calculator when I put it in. Now I know this, I need to think, well, what happens to this? Do these two react? In other words, does this just have a pH of 7, which means it just dissociates, or does it dissociate and then react? In an earlier lesson, we looked at the pH of salts of weak acids and salts of weak acids. Sorry, bases and acids. This is the salt of a weak acids conjugate. So it's going to have a pH above 7 because it's the ethanoate ion is a conjugate base. So that's actually what the question is asking me to do. Find the pH of this weak base. So for that, I need to write a new equation, and this one's in equilibrium. So I now take this, and I write a new equation. Because it's a solution, so it's reacting with the water that's present there. And so what I end up with, I'm going to ignore the sodium ion, it's a spectator, it's not involved. So CH3COO negative plus water. Equilibrium to remind me to write a K expression for this. OH means that the K expression I'm going to be writing is a KB expression. So, sorry, should the first equation have a negative at the end? Like... No. This one's got a sodium ion with it. Oh, okay. I've taken it away because it's a spectator. Good cool. question though, thank you. In this, I know the concentration of this one here. I don't know the concentration of this or this, but I could assume that they are the same. Because all the ethanoic acid is being used up. So the only ethanoic acid present here is from this equilibrium. So this is going to be my unknown. This is going to be the same concentration. Water we don't worry about in an equilibrium expression. And this one is 0.0667. So I've actually got most of what I need. I'm also going to need to do something with my Ka, 
because if I write this out, it's not an acid, it's a base. KB is going to be equal to, I'm going to break this down quite quickly because we've done these so many times, x squared, that times that, over 0.0667, so this number here. Remember, x is going to be hydroxide. So I can then rewrite it as OH negative equals the square root of KB times 0 0.0667. So my next step is how the heck do I get that KB value? Oh, it's you go 1.74 times 10 to the negative 5. No, no, 10 to the negative 14 over that. Perfect. So to find my KB... I also need to go 10 to the negative 14 over the value I was given, 1.74 times 10 to the negative 5. And that will give me my value there. 5.75 times 10 to the negative 10. Great. So we plug that number into our calculation there. So this number times this number equals square root equals, and we'll have our hydroxide ion concentration. One to be done. Um, it's very small. It is very small. Uh, zero point zero 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 one nine. Can I have it in six. scientific notation? One point nine six times ten to the negative one. Six. Yeah, it looks all right. Because that's pretty close to point one, so it'll be about a tenth of that. So that's cool. And no, square root five. five? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that's moles per litre. Now there's two ways I can do this. I can find out my POH, then go 14 minus that. Or I can find my hydronium ion concentration, and then do the pH from that. I personally prefer to do negative log of this for the POH, and then go 14, so PKW, minus that. So if I could have negative log of that answer there, please. Okay, that's 4.71. So my pH is 14 minus 4.71. 9. 9.29. Okay, so 9.3 is probably good enough for our graph, isn't it? So 9.29. So I've now done the hardest part of my titration. I've found the pH of the equivalence point which actually, once you know how to start it, is just finding the pH of a weak base, really, or a, the, pH, the pH of a salt. Which we did last term. Which we did last term. Is that the answer? That's the answer. So your answers are 40.0 mils, which would go on your graph, which we all have sketched in our books, and 9.29 is the pH. Or you'd probably only get it to 9.3 because um, of how your books are set up. Alright, so you've now got all that. This means that I want an indicator which has a pKa around about 9, give or take 1. So something like phenylphthalein would be an excellent indicator for this because of the very tiny change in volume, you'd see a complete colour change from colourless to pink. Um, so when we, we get told the indicators, will they tell us the pHs of them? Tell They'll the tell colour. you the pKa's and the colours so to help you decide. Memorize the colours. No, they're given to you. Oh no, that is memorise what colour is what pH. Again, they're given to you. Are we, so we're given a list of the indicators. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so don't need to memorise. So yeah, so just to clarify what the discussion's about there for those watching the video, um, and and the assessment for this. Um, the examiners often give a list of indicators, the colour changes that they have and their PKAs. The, the student has to say from this information which indicator they would choose for this titration and justify their choice. It must lie in the steepest part of the graph, which means pretty close to this value here. If it's outside that, then it might be in the buffer region or in a part of the graph where a 
a very small, sorry, a very large um, volume change is required for a big enough pH change. You want to have the tiniest pH change possible so, for the indicator to change colour. So the indicator needs to have a Ka or a PKA? PKA, a PKA incredibly close to this pH. Okay. Yeah, well not incredibly close, but in that steepest part of the graph. Yeah. Okay.